Hello everybody, this is Eric with Master Tool Repair here again with you. Uh, today's video we're going to explain how an air compressor operates and works. So you bought an air compressor and you want to know how, not necessarily how to use it, but how it works. And now what? And if something goes wrong, what are you going to do? What do you replace? Uh, so we're going to go over some, uh, some general uh, terms here. I'm going to give an explanation of these different parts on an air compressor, the components, how it functions, so you know, you know, I have more information. When something goes wrong or you need to replace something or service your air compressor, you know what to look for and you have a general idea. All right, so we have three air compressors here. Uh, we have an electric air compressor that's oil bath belt driven. We have a smaller oil free direct drive air compressor, very popular uh, style, style find in many stores. You have a gas driven uh, air compressor here that's also oil bath. All right, so virtually all air compressors function the same way when you're talking about reciprocating air compressors. All uh, right, they do, they operate in the same manner. So it doesn't matter if it's stationary, it doesn't matter if it is oil bath, it doesn't matter how large the pump is or small, they, they operate in the same manner. All right, what an air compressor does is, well, it's somewhat self-explanatory in the surface. It compresses air, right? It takes atmospheric air and it sucks it in the air intake filter. Uh, here's an automotive style filter, this is the air intake. It sucks it in and the air gets compressed and it transfers that compressed air uh, via transfer tube to your air receiver or air tanks. All right, so that's the basic function, all right? That's what it does. It compresses air, stores it, so you can use it for various applications. All right, and the major components you're gonna find here, of course, your air compressor pump. This has two pistons and is an oil bath pump. They go up and down, you know, not too different from a car engine. Actually, a lot simpler than a car engine. I mean, it does have pistons and a crankshaft, and it has connecting rods and it has valves, you know? So you have intake valves open and you have exhaust valves that open and let the air into the tank. So you have the air compressor pump, and this is an electric motor driven unit. So you have your electric motor here, which drives the pump. You gotta have your power source, uh, either gas engine or electric motor, and this is your motor. Your capacitor is on your motor. And uh, the major components you're gonna find on the air compressor that control everything, make everything happen, are as follows. All right, we have the on-off pressure switch, right? You gotta turn the compressor on. All right, this is, uh, there are many different types and styles. Some are small, some are little, you know, some are little buttons and switches. May look like this, an on-off switch that pulls. Some may be uh, lever switches. They all function the same way. All right, it's an electro-pneumatic switch. And what it does is it not only cuts the compressor on and off, but it also controls the pressures at what uh, and when the compressor cuts on. So it's preset at the factory, your pressure switch, based on the specifications of your air compressor. All right, this is 90 PSI cut on pressure and 125 PSI cut off. And that is, pre con that is controlled and preset at the factory. So you don't have to you know, necessarily turn it off and on manually. All right, so the pressure switch is wired. Um, it wires to your motor, your motor and power cord uh, wired to your pressure switch. And this is a, it's a pretty popular component to replace. Sometimes, you know, they get, uh, your wires get fried and you have too, you know, you have too many amps running through your switch, so it'll fry your contacts. Um, so that's a very popular part we sell. Um, so your pressure switch is really the, one of the main components in the brains of the compressor. All right, so below it, we have our safety release valve. It's exactly, as the name implies, a safety mechanism. So when the switch fails, and this unit does not stop and it continues to pressurize, this blows off so you don't have a pipe bomb on your hands. Uh, that would be uh, life-threatening and very dangerous. So this little guy, very, very important, safety release valve. All right, you have your manifold here, which uh, threads into your tank inlet. Next component we're gonna look at are the pressure gauges. Make sure your pressure gauges are accurate and they are reading correctly. A lot of people do kind of overlook that. They may not read their pressure uh, gauges Make sure to, uh, that they are accurate and glance at them every now and then. This is your tank pressure gauge. You're always going to have two. Tank pressure reads the tank pressure, exactly, 125 PSI for this guy. And you have your regulated pressure. That's for your uh, regulated line pressure out to your hose or out to your tool. All right, so here is an, another component, your air regulator, right? It regulates the air and out of uh, the transfer. Uh, as the air tanks into your line. So it's gonna regulate anywhere from zero to the maximum pressure uh, to your nail gun or to your uh, spray painter, what have you. 
All right, so this guy is a something that you'll pop uh, will replace probably in the future if you use your air compressor. It leaks. You know, it has diaphragm inside and various components. When you turn the knob to adjust it, it's, you know it's going to it's going to happen. You're going to form some leaks. So that's a pretty uh, popular item that you'll uh, probably replace. It goes bad every now and then. Uh, so your regulator, well, another one of the main components. Uh, let's see, you have your coupler here. Uh, pretty obvious as to what that is, but this attaches the air hose to the air outlet, simply enough. Um, here we have a, a check valve, another very, very popular part that we sell here, Master Tool Repair. Your check valve is a one-way tank, all right? It's going to hold the air in the tank so it opens as the unit pressurizes, and it's going to close after the unit shuts off so as to not let air backfeed from the tank into the line and on the pump head. So that's your check valve. You, you, that causes all kinds of problems. Uh, you know, it's a very common part to replace. Now, drain your tanks, that'll keep your check valve also from uh, from going bad as well. If you drain your tanks, the drain cock's here in the bottom of your tank. Just a simple neural or wing nut valve. And uh, after every extended use, I would recommend draining the tanks, because if not, then they, they can uh, build up moisture and it'll rust through. So keep those nice and, uh, the tanks nice and dry by draining your uh, tanks every after every extended use. Uh, here with the belt guard, it's pretty obvious is what that is. Uh, belt guard is going to keep your fingers on your hands and uh, you keep them attached, so very important. Um, your flywheel uh, has fins on it. Your flywheel will cool the pump, so make sure if you uh, don't have any cracked fins on your flywheel, uh, but that does keep the pump nice and cool. And this is an OSHA requirement, so if you are using this, especially in any kind of commercial uh, aspects you need to have your belt guard on as an OSHA requirement. Um, those are the uh, main components of a pump and we're actually going to, uh, I'm sorry, of an air compressor. We're going to look at the pump now. Uh, the pump, uh, you'll find your oil side glass typically for an oil bath unit. Uh, make sure to keep the oil level at least at the in the center of the red dot or slightly above it. Uh, here's your oil breather because your pump has to be able to breathe and the crankcase has to breathe air. So this is where the, that air will vent out of. Um, but this is an oil bath reciprocating compressor. It has two pistons up and down, and they open uh, the inlet valves, and the inlet valves uh, suck the air into the head, and then exhaust valves open to let the air through the transfer tube. All right, so that's an uh, electric-driven unit. All right, here's gas-driven contractor compressor, style compressor here, wheelbarrow. Very uh, popular style you'll find, you'll find out there in... Uh, Basic components are the same, right? The function of this air compressor is the same as an electric driven unit. You just have a different drive, right? You have a gas engine instead of an electric motor. And instead of an on-off electrical pressure switch, you have, over here, you have a pilot unloader valve. All right, so this brass valve here is the brains of the unit, just like a pressure switch would be on an electric driven unit. Uh, you have, it's preset, the, pres uh, the pressure the factory sets it for, based on the specs of the unit. And uh, again, this is uh, say around 90 PSI cut on, 125 PSI cut off. Um, this little toggle here, this is going to be to load and unload the compressor. So this is up in a vertical position, that means it is unloaded. Now when I say unloaded, that means that the compressor is pumping and the engine is on idle, but the pressure is bypassing the tanks. So when it reaches maximum pressure, it bypasses the tanks. Uh, so this is in unloaded position, so it makes it easier to start. So when you start a gas compressor, you're going to want to flip that up to the unloaded position. It's not engaging the pump and, and the air is not passing through the tanks. This is unloaded. So air is actually uh, being pressurized and being transferred into the tanks. All right, so this is uh, your pilot loader valve, and I say unloader valve too because it, it also, uh, in some pilot valves, will have an unloader port and it will unload uh, the excess air through in a loader and uh, out into the atmosphere so it doesn't keep pressurizing your tanks. All right, so this is kind of just like a pressure switch, and it is adjustable too. So these these uh, can be adjusted if you know it doesn't continue to uh, cut off at the right pressure that you want it to. Uh, being a gas engine, it doesn't necessarily shut off. It's a constant run unit, so not it's not like an electric compressor where it shuts off. And the other component that makes that happen is the bullwhip throttle control, and this, uh, or a th any kind of throttle control, it could be bullwhip, it could be a, uh, which is a cable, or it can be a pneumatic uh, hollow nylon tube. Uh, this one right here happens to be a nylon tube. All right, so your throttle idle control, this is going to take the signal from the pilot valve, 
which tells the unit to, okay, you've reached maximum pressure. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set and trip this uh, unloader line, uh, this throttle control rather, to actuate the throttle idle control valve itself. Now this kicks the unit back down to idle speed. So it is running at a slower RPM and the compressor is no longer pressurizing the air tanks. So this is a piston style throttle control. What it does is connect it to the, the throttle plate and the governor of the engine. So this bar will flick out and it will adjust the governor so that it kicks down to a slower idle speed. And there are very di uh, different types of throttle control assemblies. Some may install in a different position on a, ga a gas engine, uh, but they all function the same way. And when the unit is uh, called for air again, you use the pressure, use the air in the tanks, say around 90 PSI, the pressure, uh, the pilot valve senses that and says, okay, we need to kick back into high gear and start pressurizing again, right? So to build more pressure. So it'll, t it'll send the signal through the tube here to the throttle control and it will kick the governor into high gear. High gear, that means high speed so that the uh, compressor starts to pressurize again, pressurize the air tanks. So the main components that are different on a gas engine are obviously the gas engine itself, the pilot unloader valve, and the throttle idle control valve. So, but they, again, it operates the same way, same function, the same concept as any other air compressor. Um, see, our belt guard here, we have our two intake filters here. Again, it looks a little bit different, but it's gonna be the same exact kind of a concept. It sucks, air is sucked into the intake filters, pressurized through the pump, and of course, down your transfer tube and into your air tanks. So on this unit, we have, uh, the parts we have are the same as on that uh, electric unit over there. We have pressure gauges, we have regulators. They look a little bit different, uh, but they're, uh, again, the same parts you'll find on any air compressor. Right here, uh, in that main tank manifold is your tank pressure gauge. You have your regulator here, kind of looks, it's an older style, so it's an older plunger style regulator. This is a uh, uh, same function, just looks a little bit different. This is your air regulator, adjusting the air to the line or to your tool in a, or application. Regulator pressure gauge, uh, make sure that's accurate, because if not, then you won't be regulating your pressure accurately to your line, so important you have uh, accurate gauges. Uh, this is simply a ball valve that either closes the air flow to the outlet or closes it. This is your, uh, not a regulator here, you know, it looks like one. This is a particulate filter and oil filter. So it's gonna trap water, it's gonna trap oil and particulates into the, uh, you know, from the uh, compressor. And before it reaches your outlet, you know, airline, it'll all be gathered in here. And typically it has a little bowl and you can, it has a drain on the bottom to drain the oil or particulates or water. And this is extremely important. Uh, it's an accessory, it's not necessary for every application but a particular filter is necessary when you are using uh, the air compressor for say spray painting or sandblasting. You know, those applications where you cannot have any oil or water in the line as it will ruin the paint job for instance. So a particular filter is uh, certainly recommended uh, for oil free units like this guy over here. Not necessarily it's an oil free unit so oil particular filter not going to be as important. Uh, so you're always going to get some moisture in the tanks and it's a good idea, we always recommend to install a simple uh, water filter or a particulate filter if you can. They make them very uh, small inline type filters just like, like this, about this size that you can easily install on the line. Definitely recommend it. Uh, so you have uh, other options and accessories you can use but really specific to your application. It's always recommended though to install necessarily water filters and particulate filters. Uh, those are your uh, the main components of an air compressor. That's how an air compressor works. We have a lot of documents. We have videos uh, that do go into a more specific and uh, detailed explanation for the various components. Ch check those out. We have uh, videos on pilot valves and pressure switches, how to adjust, how to troubleshoot. Certainly take a look at those online and send us your requests. If you have videos and want us to uh, explain uh, more various components uh, of an air compressor, we will be glad to do that. But hopefully that gave you some good information and keep it on the lookout for the next video.